Oh, you know it. You know it. Mm -hmm. So they want to hear what you think about the book. So I'm going to read a scripture from Amos. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you share with me what you think about that passage from a strong Kenyan man perspective. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> read it. <laughs> All right. So... <clears throat> Amos, the fifth chapter, and it starts at the 21st verse, and it says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fatted peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your string instruments. But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness for 40 years, O house of Israel? You also carry Sukkot, your king, and to whom your idols and the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you captive beyond Damascus. That is Amos, the fifth chapter, from the 21st verse through to the 27th. The word of the Lord is blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So tell me, from a Kenyan preacher perspective, mm -hmm. men of God, what do you think of that scripture? What do you think Amos is saying, and why is he saying it? Uh, from what Amos was saying, mm -hmm. what I am thinking, mm -hmm. uh, the people at that time, mm -hmm. they were not honoring God. Uh. And uh, according to the scripture that the word that came from the Lord through Amos, mm -hmm. the Lord wanted uh, the people that were together with Amos to cleanse their first, cleanse themselves first. Yes. Follow the right will of God. Mm -hmm so that even the offerings that they are giving will be accepted yes. and the Lord God will heal everything that were hindering them from prospering. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the, from the small scripture, because I have not read it large, that is what I can say about it. Yeah. Amen. Oh, also, the other thing is that mm, <coughs> What Amos is speaking that uh, people have become flatterers. People are flattering God. Uh, and uh, instead of doing the right thing, the right way, people have decided to do the wrong thing the big way. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody is carrying a big offering and placing it. And behind the offering is not doing the right thing that, that God requires. Mm -hmm. So now uh, people are putting bigger things like offering, doing wonderful things. And then behind the, uh, the things they, they, are, they are giving as offerings, they are doing evil things, think, thinking that God is not seeing them. And now God is coming to a conclusion and saying, now I have realized right. that these things you are doing, these things are not right. Yes. Uh, somebody, one uh, a preacher also from the United States, from Sugai Baptist Church, it's called Pastor Bobby, was telling us that uh, you better do it uh, a smaller way but the right way instead of doing it the bigger way but the wrong way. Mm. So this is what Amos is trying to correct, telling mm. people that God needs us to do the right things, no matter how small it is, Yes. no matter how slowly you do it, do it the right way do what God requires, mm -hmm. but don't magnify things, and in that, uh, in, in, by doing the mighty things and very greater things, 
our life does not reflect the will of God. Amen. This is what I'm mostly trying to correct, according to my understanding. Amen. But he's saying now, now God has come to a conclusion. He has seen and he has realized that people uh, are hiding behind the good thing. They are using <coughs> offerings as, as bait. Uh, they draw the offerings. So people, when people see the offerings, people say, oh, these are the right people. That was the problem in those days, because what, was, what he was prophesied, the kings in those days were against <coughs> what he was prophesying. Because there are some three prophets that were going on in the, in the, in the land of Israel. Number one, there's an oppression of the poor, injustice, and yes. also slave trade. And uh, the type of worship the people of Israel were worshiping was a uh, corrupt one and democratical type of worship. Mm -hmm. Okay, they rely on the, the giving, which is not true, because of an offering starts from our hearts. It comes from our hearts, not what we are giving. Mm -hmm. So, um, they were in the wrong way of worshiping God. Because they did, not, they, did not, they did not know the way of worshiping God. Because this, it is from the book of Romans chapter 12 that we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Yes. But with them they were offering their offerings oh. as a living sacrifice to God. Okay. And yet they abandoned some two, three things. There are so much of injustice in the country, in the nation, and also oppression of the poor, and also slave trade and the practice that was going on. As I'm compared to Kenya, Day. Yeah. So that's the problem that was in the nation of Israel. That's why God speaks to uh, the prophet Amos, confront them of their sins, so that they come back and start uh, worshiping God in their hearts. Okay. Those experiences. Yes, sir. Yes. And I know from promise that they must be born. Concerning the sacrifice, your question was about me, pastors in the Yes. And the what I'm most was prophesied the nation. Most of the pastors in our country, I just tell you that they're not bold enough to you speak know, to all the evil of any king. When they go to the king, they just say, you king, live love, without telling him the evil of this. Then, you may just take the, 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 the king or the, the, or the president, goes to his treasure and gives one million to him. Now he's just praising him. But the truth, is that we should be born. Unless a preacher is transformed, he cannot show the evil of a local leader. When he is transformed, he is a good prophet. Because he will say to the Lord, say, don't do this and this and this. That says the Lord. Now, the Lord will be in control of him because he is stood in the truth. And that is the truth Amos was on. So a preacher must be bold in his sermon. Bold in his sermon. In his sermon. Are you, are you men of God, are you bold in your sermons? Yeah, in our sermons. Yes, yeah. you are, we are bold. bold. Uh, what is happening, uh, actually, uh, generally, we, if we look at the leadership, uh, church leadership in Kenya as a whole, uh, uh, we have a few bold leaders yes. who can stand and speak the truth, uh -huh. no matter what. Uh -huh. But majority of the leaders, what church leaders, not only the church leaders, they, they can speak, but when they are in the presence of the political leaders, they can do 
the will of the political leaders. There is no courage to stand before the king and tell the king what you are doing is wrong. Then, and the ministers and the local authorities, uh, people tend to look for donation from leaders. Mm -hmm. And that donation compromises the truth that they ought to have sp spoken to the leaders. People do not want to speak the truth. So Amos was very bold and he was speaking the truth no matter who he was speaking to. Uh, actually, uh, generally, we, if we look at the leadership, uh, church leadership in Kenya as a whole, uh, uh, we have a few bold leaders yes. who can stand and speak the truth uh -huh. no matter what. Uh -huh. But majority of the leaders, what church leaders, not only the church leaders, they, they can speak but when they are in the presence of the political leaders, they can do the will of the political leaders. There is no courage to stand before the king and tell the king what you are doing is wrong. Uh -huh. I'm them yeah, that one is very difficult. You find that when uh, we are before the king, in this case we say the president and the ministers and the local authorities, uh, people tend to look for donation from leaders mm -hmm. and that donation compromises the truth that they ought to have sp spoken to the leader. Amos was very bold and he was speaking the truth no matter who he was speaking to. I look at how hard and difficult it is sometimes to live in Kenya. Yeah. Not enough water, not enough electricity, not enough paved roads, not enough. Mm -hmm. I have been a pastor for 34 years. Yes sir. Yes. Mm. And I have seen the pain Mm. and the problem that I have passed on is mm -hmm. uh, doing the work of the Lord. Yes. I would lost my job ah. because of this. Because of being a pastor. Mm. Mm. But uh, I also know the powerfulness and the hand of the Lord, how it works. Yes. Therefore, it, 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 it is supposed to come for braveness and to be courageous in doing it, you just do it. You will not surrender to do the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, many or some of the pastors, the young one, and those who have worked for it have passed in Kenya. People okay. have passed through one. this thing. Really? But to speak that sometimes even in our churches, we have sometimes somebody who is a well off in the church. Yes. And he's sinning. Yes. There are some pastors who are afraid to tell the truth to him or to her. Mm. In the government, mm -hmm. in some of the institutions yes. that people are working. Yes. But. Uh, I am seeing many of the Kenyan pastors, they are very ca courageous. Mm -hmm. They are very courageous. Even if it is supposed, they are supposed to stand on the right foot of God, they will remain there, they will remain hungry, mm -hmm. they will remain, they, uh, they are being tested, they are being persecuted, mm. they are being doing what, but they will stand there and do it. Therefore, I, I, I'm, I'm very happy to hear or to have the scripture that you have read from the book of Amos. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, I'm very thankful, but uh, I'm, I'm praying mm -hmm. that uh, maybe the Lord was speaking to you or was having a plan inside you mm. yeah, to have this talk with us. And I know it is the will of God, and it will prevail. Yes. 